Looks like it's going to be Orange's day again. Yeah, <laughs> taking another first place. One of the most accomplished players in Hearthstone continuing to win. Yeah, adding more to that prize money total, adding more to that win list. Yeah. What was he at? 18 points of damage. His opponent is on 17 health. Orange, the local man, the Swede, is going to take down DreamHack Summer 2017, and he is going to pick up the world's biggest trophy in the process. What a match. Yeah. Orange from Alliance taking the title on his own turf. And Could you imagine a better storyline? Not yeah. really. Hello everyone. It's been a while. In today's video, we are gonna go over how to properly prepare for Luster Standing Tournament. Some of you may have seen that uh, DreamHack announced that uh, next week already they're gonna host uh, a series of online events with over 30k dollars in prize pool that's uh, being played in the last year Standing format. If you want to sign up for this, you still can, and I'll leave a link to it down in the description. Last year's standing events and even dream hacks are some of my most memorable events throughout my career. I think that last year standing is an amazing tournament format uh, in terms of competitive play, and I played it a lot throughout the years. I did build myself the reputation of uh, being one of the one of the scariest players to face in especially last year's standing tournaments and I think a lot of uh, this success was due to my testing process in preparing for the event and that's why I want to go over in this video is uh, well how, how do I prepare for last year's standing tournaments because that is not the simplest thing to do something to remember though is that preparing for last year's standing is very different from what most of you might be used to in Conquest. So it's going to be quite of a lot, but I'll try to make it as uh, simple as possible so that everyone can follow along with. But if you have questions regarding what I'm going over in this video later, uh, leave a comment and I'll respond as well as I can. So what is last year's standing? I'll start with the very basics. Uh, it's different from Conquest. Whereas Conquest, you bring three to four decks, and when you have one with each of your decks, you advance in the series. In Luster Standings, you each start with one deck, and when you lose with a deck, it's elimin eliminated from the series. Uh, and the winner of the game keeps playing with the deck that they won with. And then you play until one player has had all of their decks eliminated, and then they lose the series, and the player who has decks still left uh, wins. One of the most iconic series of this is uh, the 2015 World Championship, where Firebat managed to win over Tiddler Celestial by winning with his combo druid three times in a row, and uh, thus earning the World Championship title. So, it might sound like it's not too much different uh, as a format, but it actually gets incredibly different when you look into it. As an in conquest, uh, one of the few strategies you can go for is try to be good against one of the top decks. Uh, that way, targeting targeting it and making sure that it never gets a win in a series. Another thing you can do in conquest is that after your ban stage, you it's all right to not have the greatest of matchups against the best deck that you're leaving up, because if you lose against it, it's just one win in your opponent's book then you can be good against the other decks. But if you do this in last year's standing, then you're going to be in for a rough ride because that really doesn't work here. So let me set an example. Uh, imagine that uh, I want to bring Hunter, Paladin and Demon Hunter to this tournament. And then I run into my opponent who is running Priest that uh, happens to be very good against all of these three. Uh, what then happens is that uh, there's a very large sweep potential uh, for Priest, which means that it's eventually gonna be very likely to beat all three of my decks, and hence just single-handedly winning my opponent the series. So what that means is that I need to build my lineup so that I have at least one of my decks that is good against Priest so that I don't risk getting swept by it in a series. 
So imagine instead that I decide that I bring Warlock instead of Paladin. Then my opponent with Priest might beat my Hunter, but then I can uh, counter Q with the Warlock to get the win, and then their Priest is out of the series, and we can carry out and play out the match without getting swept. You do have a ban, of course, so if you never want to play against Priest, you can also choose to do that. But uh, you can replace Priest with any other Hoston class in the game. Uh, for this example, and that's where it gets tricky because you need to have a good matchup spread against uh, pretty much all classes in the game. Which might sound like a lot, but I'll walk you through how to make sure that you're not missing anything in that regard. The first thing we need to do is to make sure that we have plenty of data so that we have an accurate view of each matchup in the metagame. My three favorite sources for this is hostonreplay.net, uh, it's offcurve.com, and Vicious Syndicate. Uh, hostonreplay.net probably has the best graph that I'm going to get into in a bit if, to uh, look at luster standing lineups, but it also to get access to the good stats, you need to have premium. But um, luckily, if you don't have access to that, you can use viciousyndicate.com or offcurve.com. Uh, that both have great plenty of data that you can look from. Uh, Vicious Syndicate has mostly data from ladder, whereas offcurve.com is tracking data from qualifiers. If you need inspiration on what decks you want to run or what decks the top players run in tournaments, uh, there are a few other tools you can also use. Max League is an open running tournament that is going on currently, which is played in luster standing format. And uh, Top players submit decks each week. I'll put a link to uh, their the deck list page in uh, the description below. But you can also check out donkey.top and jaders.com to see tournament uh, winning lineups. Uh, keep in mind that this video is going to be mostly about how to process data when preparing for tournaments and not as much about gameplay as I usually do. If you're looking for gameplay videos, I'm looking to come out with such videos very soon. But for today, we're looking more on the in-depth of tournament preparation. The first site that we are going to be visiting for the last of standing prep is going to be houseandreplay.net. Most of you have probably used this site in the past, but if not, this is a great place to learn about the decks and data when it comes to Hearthstone. Uh, what we'll be using today is that you go to the start page, from there you press meta, and then you press this little tab that I'm not sure how many of you have used before. It says matchups. When you press this page, you get uh, a lot of numbers thrown at you right away. What we got here in front of us is a large matchup sheet where you can see uh, the matchups between decks in the meta game. Uh, so if I check here, I can see uh, Rush Warrior versus Miracle Rogue is 59% uh, favor from Rush Warrior. And uh, if I hover above it, I can also see the sample size and a lot more. I should add here that uh, uh, sorting through uh, Legend Top 1000 stats is a premium function. So if you don't have premium, don't sweat it. I'll show you how you can do this similarly with uh, Vicious Syndicate. But for the purpose of this video, um, House and Replay got a lot easier ways for me to sort and show it on screen. So I'll be using that. I had to make myself really small for this one. But as you can see here, by um, in this archetype section is the decks that you are playing. So if you look here, it's Rush Warrior versus Miracle Rogue. We're playing Rush Warrior, it's 59%. Uh, by clicking the decks like these, you can uh, choose them as your favorite text so they should show up in the at the top. Uh, but what you also want to be doing when for tournaments is that you go down here to custom weights. And uh, this way you can filter out uh, decks that uh, might not be as, uh, as relevant to uh, the, the tournament meta that you expect. Basically, you go here and I like to use it zeros and ones and you set a 1 under the, 
decks that you expect to be playing against in the tournament. Uh, keep in mind that uh, when you look at this and if you see me miss some deck that might be uh, that might be expected, uh, this is more to show off my process of doing things and not exactly to do the practice for you. So comments like, oh, you didn't check in Control Warlock or whatever might not be very useful because that's not the point of the video. Anyway, now we come <laughs> into a big big one that's gonna be probably something gonna get pretty repetitive throughout the video but here's the important part you need to pay attention to the green matchups the red matchups and the yellow matchups and I'll be talking a lot about this throughout the rest of the video what I mean with this is pretty simple you see that there are matchups that are in green which means they are favored red which means they're unfavored then on Aegis Replay, there aren't as many yellows, but uh, when uh, matchups are closer to 50%, you see, uh, you see them being turned into the yellow color. And why is this so important? Well, you see, by looking at the, the in these columns, so here's your lineup against Miracle Rogue, here's your lineup versus Rush Warrior, here's your lineup versus... Lifestyle Demon Hunter, you get a very clear and simple view of where your lineup is strong and where it struggles. Remember how in early in the video I talked about how the most important thing is to have an even matchup spread so you don't get swept by decks? Well, by looking at this, you very easily see what decks that have a potential to sweep you and what decks that you will be uh, particularly strong against. Ideal lineup you're looking for, what you need to look for is that while you have a ban, so for example, seeing how all your decks have a poor matchup against Priest might be fine because that might just point you into the direction that maybe I should ban it, but that you can have no more than one class that you have uh, three red matchups against. Because what that means is that if uh, I were to bring Miracle Rogue, Rush Warrior, Lifestyle Demon Hunter, and Control Priest, my plan would very likely be to ban a Priest. Then, if I look here at No Minion Mage, I have three unfavorable matchups and one favored. What that means is that if I go into a series and my opponent bans my uh, Miracle Rogue, that is the only deck that is favored versus Mage, then it's very likely that I get swept on, uh, swept by the mage. We can also see by looking at this particular lineup that something like Control Warrior would also be a problem in case that our Lifestyle Demon Hunter would not be allowed to be played in the series. And you might look at this as saying, but the, oh look, we're so strong against Face Hunter. Uh, we have all green matchups versus it. But sadly, how good you are in matchups uh, are not as relevant as in not being bad in matchups. Uh, that just means that you're gonna have a plethora of options to win one time versus their hunter if you go up against the lineup with face hunter in it. So it's gonna be more focused on uh, canceling the red matchups more than uh, making sure that we have more green matchups. So what is so nice about using House and Replay as a tool for this is that you can quickly identify what your weak links are. For example, we see here that uh, Rush Warrior is one of the weak links against both No Minion Mage and Control Warrior. What we can do is that we can just unclick it and instead look at alternatives for something that is strong against Control Warrior. So, for example, No Minion Mage itself and Right away, we can see how the different matchup spreads, these four you want to look at, changes. I mean, now we just added a 50-50 against no minion mage, so maybe we didn't improve that too much. But we, at least uh, against Control Warrior, we are... Now we have two green matchups, which means that even if they ban one of their decks, we can still counter Control Warrior with the other deck. And... Uh, then you see if did any new problems uh, 
the new problems arise from adding spell mage in any of the other matchups. See that Ephrael Demon Hunter got a bit uh, got a bit worse for a lineup if Miracle Rogue is banned. Then we can see maybe we try and cut Lifesteal Demon Hunter. See what's good against Ephrael Demon Hunter. Space Hunter seems to be an option. And uh, then we go again. Basically, you just keep trying different variables and uh, decks that you're comfortable with and know that you can play and you see where when you find a lineup that doesn't run into any obvious problems i'll go on a side note here and say that don't stare yourself too blindly at the numbers uh, if there is a lineup that you really want to play and it looks all right and it has uh, some weakness against like maybe some of the more off meta decks then i think it's better that you play decks that you know how to play uh, matchup familiarity is incredibly important in luster standing because you're gonna be playing against a lot of different decks with each of yours so basically to summarize this is what you want to do is that in the archetype column you want to test a bunch of different variables between the decks that you can play and you want to make sure that in these columns that there are no more than two red uh, spaces in each of these and uh, if you achieve that then you're probably on a pretty good track of finding a really good lineup and for those of you who don't got ages replay uh, tools that you can use that are very similar is the for example viciousindicate.com where you go to the data reaper report data reaper live uh, click through this then once again go to the matchup tab and here you got a similar uh, table of matchups where you can hover with sample size and uh, can even go rank range etc while it's not as easy to sort uh, X like it is on HS Replay, uh, you still see the same uh, thing with the reds and, well, the greens are turning blues and yellows. And uh, basically just go through this the same way with a little bit less uh, tools for sorting it. But it, it works the same. And last but not least, there's also offcurve.com where it has uh, data from the master tour qualifiers uh, sword here you can go to deck matchups and uh, sort by whatever qualifiers you want and sample size and all that good stuff and you have a similar matchup sheet as to that you do on both vicious syndicate and uh, house and replay the upside here is that you get stats from people who are actually playing in tournaments or actually playing qualifiers so it might be a little bit more useful for a tournament setting uh, i recommend all three of these sites i use them all a lot myself and uh, these will be very important to cross check with going forward we are gonna go to one final step for our own preparation the last thing that we are gonna do is that we are gonna create our own uh, spreadsheet of matchups and uh, this might seem a little bit strange because when we have access to all of this data why would we create one ourselves well you see while you should probably you will probably do better to not disagree with data that are posted on these data sites because they got way larger sample size than uh, we do ourselves uh, these in last year's standing, it's incredibly important that you check your decks right and that you uh, take how you build your decks in account for when you calculate matchup spreads. For example, if you want to check your OTK Demon Hunter with double ooze, it's hard to get specific data on specific matchups with specific tech cards. And that, while you will not have perfect numbers of this, you will probably have a good grasp if, say, 
uh, that your OTK Demon Hunter with two Uses is uh, better than uh, better against Doomhammer Shaman than the that say on data side. And these tech inclusions that you are working with are gonna affect the percentages. So while the uh, data sites are an incredibly good baseline, you do want to make your own spreadsheet so that you can mix a little bit with the numbers as you see fit based on your actual matchup testing when you play matches to prepare for the tournament. What you see in front of you here is uh, actually the I managed to dig up the spreadsheet that me, Ostkaka, and Powder used when I won uh, DreamHack Summer. And what you see, uh, what you see here on screen, is actually a matchup table of uh, my eventual winning lineup. As you can see, we just uh, oh, Mitsuhito was part of it too. Uh, as you can see, we had a lot of different variations and tried a lot of different things and see how it worked numbers wise. But uh, we did so by creating our own sheet of data that uh, we worked with for weeks to prepare for the tournaments. Uh, now I'm no uh, expert on Excel, so <laughs> you'll, you'll get to give me a pause on the Excel skills here. But basically how you start doing one of these is that you uh, start to uh, type out the decks that you expect to be played in the tournament um, one by one like this when you typed in most of the decks that you are uh, planning on facing it, it, Take note how this looks very similar to what we did on HS Replay. You start typing in the decks that you are considering. So, uh, Control Priest, Rush Warrior. You can honestly do this the, the same way as just copy paste uh, these ones uh, that you got here up on top. But uh, usually it's gonna get pretty messy to begin with, so I'd like to keep this row a little bit shorter and then you can add on it later. You get here, just make it look a little bit nicer. And here comes the part where you start filling in, the, well, the percentages of the matchups. So what I recommend that you do is that you, if you're, do first of all, uh, I recommend that you do this together with someone and if not together with someone at least cross check with uh, someone else if they agree or disagree with the numbers that you put in afterwards if you don't have anyone to check with uh, i could recommend you joining uh, our discord that i also leave a link to in the description where we have a lot of dedicated uh, dedicated competitive players that uh, would love to give their feedback on uh, on what you're doing Getting second opinions on this is incredibly important because that's where that's where actual testing comes in. Like when I do something like this with my practice groups, all of the testing basically comes from starting and doing a sheet like this. And then when we fill it out, we come to disagreements in what we think about matchups and then we test it. And uh, by doing it that way, we get a very good uh, sense of what the matchups in the meta are and also a lot of experience with actually playing the decks. But if you don't have access to a big practice group, that's fine. Uh, you could probably do well by just looking at Hofstun Replay or Vicious Syndicate or what have you and take their numbers and just fill it in. Uh, whenever I fill it in, and also as you can see, if you look quickly on Hofstun Replay, that don't use too big numbers of this, uh, for, for this, I mean. If you look at Houston Replay, they aren't really, you don't really see higher numbers than, well, we see 73 here at the absolute highest, which I think is incredibly high. But I usually try to keep the numbers I use between 30 and 70. This is, this really doesn't have much impact, but uh, 
you 70 is a very large number in a card game and also you if you pick higher numbers than that you're not factoring in that your opponent can also take against you and the matchups might not be go exactly as you planned so be a little bit modest when you fill in the, the matchups here and also be honest with yourself because telling yourself that a matchup is much better than it really is in reality is gonna it's just gonna hurt you it's not gonna hurt anyone else so basically you start filling in here control priest versus rush warrior you think that control priest is probably a 60 percent favorite uh, control Priest versus miracle rogue also probably in the 60s somewhere against jamber druid also about 60 with kdh well we're starting with a lot of good matchups uh, for uh, priest and then against spell mage you're unfavored so it's probably somewhere around the 40s Ephraim dh is probably 55 base hunter is also probably in the in the 60s somewhere doom hammer shaman is probably pretty heavy non-favorite by so you put 35 percent and so on and so forth when you finish filling all of this out and uh, i also recommend uh, filling it in with colors so that you get a better visual overview of it uh, then you have your holy grail here you can uh, make uh, make these rows here larger but for the sake of the video i kept it pretty short um one thing that's important to note that if you're doing this by yourself and uh, you are not expected to know all of these matchups like by heart as i said you should cross check with stat sites to and just you can take what they say if you want but if it's something you're unsure of i i myself just put question marks and i made a note that well i'm gonna check this with other people and see what more experienced people think of this and not only do I get a more accurate representation here then, but I also might learn a thing or two. So that can be really useful. But now it's time to reap the benefits of what we did here. So what's so neat about doing this yourself is that you can, just like you could through Hofstein Replay tool, and for this you don't need premium since you literally made this yourself, is that you can just copy paste things from these columns into different lineups for example i want to see how control priest uh spell mage and defrel dh do I just copy it here paste it here and maybe i want miracle rogue as my last deck copy and paste and here you can see a clear representation of the reds the greens the yellows it's very important that you clear out the question marks because they might make or break the lineup at the end so uh, but this is more for the sake of the video and uh, that's what you see that we uh, did when uh, we tested for these last hero standings tournaments back in the day that we just took different variations and just ran them through this and looked looked at the reds the greens the yellows and uh, how how the how the decks fared together, and then you just mix and match this. And uh, what's so nice about this though is that while this should uh, that this here, the one that you're copy pasting from, should uh, I really recommend that being uh, considering standard decks versus each other. So just like the stock lists and their matchups. But what you can do when you uh, go down here and make these custom lineups is that you can start toying around with the numbers. For, e for example, if I see that uh, I would have a problem against uh, Hammer Shaman, which, well, granted looks pretty good right now, uh, but I say that I would like to have a better matchup uh, with Control Priest against Hammer Shaman. Uh, the stock list say that uh, I'm 40% in this matchup, but uh, let's say I want to improve this matchup and I want to play double ooze. All of a sudden, this matchup is not 40% anymore, but uh, you should improve it with, by quite a bit. Maybe it even makes the matchup as good as 55. And then you can adjust that in your sheet and uh, 
turn it into a favor down here while still keeping the stock list up here at uh, the same. Uh, when you do this, it's important to make sure that, oh, maybe be honest with yourself that if you add double ooze and remove something, you're probably making matchups worse uh, in other areas. So you have to look through all of that. But uh, this is the nice thing about having your own spreadsheet that you can uh, mix and match match with the numbers depending on how you want to tech your decks and that you can fix holes in your lineup uh, that way and get a good overview of it through having your own spreadsheet. Uh, one thing I want to add before I wrap this up is that uh, in last year's standing compared to Conquest you can get a lot more rewarded for bringing unexpected decks to the field. Since everyone will go through some sort of process similar to this, making sure that they have good matchups against the top decks in the field, if you bring a deck that people might not have accounted for, you can catch them off guard and not only take my word for it, but there are multiple stories of this happening in last standing tournaments where where someone brings a hidden gem to the tournament and manages to do well with it. You had uh, Masi bring the first uh, damage heavy list of Rasa Priest when people were taking for control of Rasa Priest. Sump won a dream hack with uh, control warlock that no one expected. I had an Ensoft Paladin in my dream hack uh, winning lineup. And uh, I think the oldest one is purple winning with uh, Malagos Warlock in a very early dream hack. So keep in mind that in last year's standing there is a lot more reward for taking risks but uh, you also can't go as wrong with just bringing the best decks but if you have some deck that you feel like it's, it's a little bit underrated I definitely recommend testing it freely because that could just win you the tournament. Through using this method with the spreadsheet that's why i arrived at this lineup back in 2018 uh, you see that uh, through uh, looking at the looking at the matchup sheets i ended up with a uh, gluttonous ooze in my uh, j druid and uh, you see there's a few more other just specific hard choices that were very much to uh, glue together uh, a few matchups Last thing before I end I would want to reiterate is how the best tool that you can use for this is that you do this together with someone or talk with other people. Uh, more heads are better than one and especially in such a format that requires you to have such vast knowledge of everything going on in Hearthstone. So really try and talk with people and discuss it with others and that's the best thing you can do when it comes to practice. Either way, I hope you liked the video. This might have been a little bit long and it might have been a lot, but I hope it helped some of you. And if you have questions, drop a comment below. I'll try to answer. And let me know if you like this sort of content. I understand that this is not for most since it's pretty niche to tournament players, but it's something pretty dear to my heart and I like doing content in on it. I will go back to more regular content soon enough, but uh, for now, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.